filters are going to let you make some changes to your lines, to your, to your image in general that are uh, pretty amazing. These are some of the most impressive features of, of the program, in my opinion. So just to show you, let's put down some lines. Maybe let's put down a thinner line and then a thicker line. Doesn't matter too much. Okay, that'll do. And let's start taking a look at these filters. So <laughs> let's go to blur first. And this is basically like a sound it's going to blur our lines. Some of these, and there's different types of blurs. Some of them are more noticeable in my opinion than others. For example, the standard blur you know what, actually, before I do that, let me turn the anti-aliasing off because I think you'll notice it more when I have it off. So, and draw a tiny line. Okay, so you can see the pixelation is a little more noticeable. Let's see what happens when we do the blur and see if we can get rid of any of that kind of pixelation. So I go up to Filter and Blur, and again, when I don't select any part of the picture, it's going to assume that I mean the entire layer. So let's just try Blur. And it does not give you any kind of a slider to adjust it. It just does a standardized change. And it looks like it maybe changed a little, but it's not very noticeable to my eye. I'm going to undo it and see what happens. So control Z. So you can see a difference. If you want to go forward, you can press control Y. So to redo something, press control Y. And you can see that it does make a slight improvement. So if you have been using a lot of, uh, not been using anti-aliasing, then that would be, might be a reason to, when you're finished, like put in a blur and that way just give it a smoother look. Okay, so I'm going to undo this, press Control Z, and try the other ones. We have Blur Strong. And this one's a little more strong, as you can expect. And this, again, might be good if you've not been using anti-aliasing. I'm going to undo it. And then we also have, excuse me, Gaussian Blur. I use this one a lot more because basically because it gives you a slider and a preview and basically you can make this really blurry watch and this is a lot of processing so it may take a second and you can see it, it blurred it a lot <laughs> there it goes and this this is kind of a cool effect like i i have found uses for this of course and uh, i think it's pretty impressive can do this. Anyways, you can adjust it, preview it by clicking preview, and then when you're done, just click OK. I'm going to cancel it though and turn it back to how we originally had it. The next one, movable blur, is kind of like something that the flash might have. It's the more you turn it up, the area to blur, the more you'll notice it, but it's it's almost like shaking. It's it's also another pretty impressive effect, I think. And you can modify this in different ways, changing the angle, the position to blur, and how to blur, each producing a slightly different effect. So that is movable blur. I'm going to cancel it and look at the other ones. We have radiation blur, which is going to use this X as our center of radiation. So if I want to move it up here, for example. And we can change the area to blur, the radius. Oh, we can't change the radius. But we can again change the front to back and so on. This one is using a lot of processing, which is why it was in previewing. So I'm just gonna show you and let it jump ahead. And it is done, finally. You can see that it's kind of radiating away from the point that I set as the radius. And uh, this looks kind of neat, I guess. It depends on how you use it, but I should warn you that it takes a long time to do. This is the longest I've ever seen a process take in this program. And I literally 
went and made soup and ate soup by the time it finished. <laughs> so this is a very long process. And uh, don't don't expect to just run this in... I, I'm used to like a 20 second process being a long time. This probably took 20 minutes, which is just unbelievable. So like a nightmare in terms of time. So be aware of that. I'm gonna undo, undo this by control Z. And finally, we have smoothing. And smoothing is going to kind of make our lines smoother, as it sounds. And we'll see how that looks. So before this, the process, I'm going to do Control Z. It's like this, and after it's like this. So a slightly different look from the um, blurring tool, but you might not even be able to notice the difference. I can hardly notice the difference, but I think I do see some, it's, it, it looks a little different. It still looks a little pixelated, but not, not too much bad. And especially at, at a distance, you probably wouldn't notice. So I think if you are using or not using anti-aliasing, you kind of have several options, but blur, strong blur and smoothing seem like the best solutions. These other ones, Gaussian blur, movable blur and radiation blur seem more appropriate for, you know, action scenes or vibration in, in a uh, image. And this is more for the fixing the lines itself, the blur, blur, and smoothing. Anyways, that's my take on these and uh, yeah, go to it with your blurring.